Amen. Amen. Before we call, we finna to go right into the service with the word of God. Amen. It's our necessary and our most vital part of our life. Amen. But I just want to take this moment to give God thanks for our leader, my bishop, my friend, my covering, my overseer, my husband, and my longtime friend. I do thank God for him. Give it up. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Some of the older mothers can attest that living with a man beyond 36 years has got to be God. Amen. Amen. I thank God for him. Amen. I really do. I really thank God for him. So right here, we're going to go into the word of the Lord. And when one speaker's finished, the next speaker can come up. Amen. Let's clap our hands for the word of God. And, let's, and we're going to call Sister Eudrika Bam. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so nervous. So I'm going to just pray right now and kill these nerves because they are here. Can you bow your hands with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come before you as humbly as I know how, God. I'm asking for strength, God. I'm asking that I decrease and you increase, God. I pray that I would say only the things that you would have me to say, God. I pray that people would be encouraged. I pray that people's faith will be fed in the midst of the message, God. I pray that so will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Giving honors to my bishop and first lady, um, to all the ministers and their wives, the deacons and their wives, my mother, grandma in her absence, and all the other mothers, to my husband. I love you. Thank you for loving me. Bishop has gave me a whole nother insight on that thing, love. Don't be telling me you love me. Show me. <laughs> Which he does. He shows me. Ain't nothing too good for me. And I thank God for him. Not a perfect man, but a willing man. And I thank God for what he's doing in his life. And I can't wait to see you in your next level of glory. And I would like to say happy 10th birthday to my baby. <laughs> My miracle baby, God has shown himself mighty in their lives, and this is only the beginning, and I can't wait to see y'all in y'all next level either. Whew. I'm going to be reading from Job, the first chapter. Um, I'm going to be speaking about faith today, and every time I get up here, I try to pretty much testify or something I, I went through or something I'm going through or something I have experienced because you can't really tell a person that God can and will unless you have experienced him doing that. And that's what I want to do today. I want to pretty much elaborate on the word and put it in how God brought me out as well as Job. I will be reading from Job 1 starting at the sixth verse. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, where, were, where do you come from? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Me personally, I know God considered me to the devil because my relationship with him, I took so vital at a young age. I didn't want to scratch the fence. I didn't want to club or drink. I didn't want to violate my body because I knew my body was a temple. And I knew I had a special calling on my life from a little girl because my mama always told me, not that I just spiritually knew it, but my mama always told me and things she tell me I always took to heart. 
And she always told me, you special. You got a calling on your life. You a woman of God. And I took my body and I took my relationship such as, and I did not want a club. I didn't club. I didn't drink. I didn't have sex with, with no man but my husband. I saved myself for him. And I knew God knew my face was just like Job. And when the devil was walking and looking for some young people to attack, God called Drika name. I know he did. But <laughs> I'm going to read on down a little more. And so Satan answered, ninth verse, so Satan answered the Lord and said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed him the work of hands, and his possessions have increased in the land. But now stretch out your hand and touch all he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in the power only do not lay a hand on his soul, on this, on his person. So Satan went out, and he presence of, went out of the presence of the Lord. That's another thing I want to elaborate on with me. Like, ever since I said I do and got married and left home, God has blessed me. I ain't never had to go back home. I always, He always made a way for me and my family. We always had lights. We always had shelter, food, clothes. And I believe, again, the devil was like, you giving her everything. She going to serve you because you got a hedge around her. You ain't allowing them to touch her. So he said, just try. Touch her, try, and see what she do. I'm going to read that a little more. And now, on 13th verse, now there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And the messenger came, and Job said, The oxen were plowing, and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and looked, took them away, indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to all of you. While he was still speaking, another one also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep, and the servants and consumed them and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another also came wow. and said the challengers formed three bands raided the camels and took them away yes and killed the servants and the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you while he was still speaking another one also came and said your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and sh struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they were dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. There the Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Whew. Now I'm going to speak on some life things. I was reading, Joel, what God had dropped in my spirit. I had been, ever since 2014 came in, drink up and battle. I mean, to where God knows where my strength is at. And when you trying to mess with my faith, I know it's time for me to turn up or just simply turn out. Because if I know if the devil would have took my faith, he had me. Ain't nothing else that could conquer the enemy but my faith and praise. And if he took my faith, I knew my praise was gone as well. I'm looking at everything going on. The night 2014 came in, my, I was just distraught. From that day on, just something every day was happening. Happening. After Christmas break, my husband went to work. They said, oh, his job over. My baby girl, whew, she's showing up. School calling me. Never before. I'm like, Lord, what is going on? Eviction notice coming on the door. I'm like, okay, Jesus. I'm reading Job. All this stuff went to happen to Job. God said, now look at that girl. I did it back then. When your mama left y'all home in 1988 and the trailer burnt down, he said, Laney, take me back home to rescue us out the south. When my baby was born 10 years ago, they said that they was dead. 
Here it is, 2014, 10 years later, they see right there, alive, well, and living. I have not missed a meal. I have not had a dark day. I still was able to get in my truck, and the truck was showing out so bad, y'all. Now, I want to curse the truck, <laughs> but I tell my husband, no, oh, that's all I got. I want to push it in the canal, <laughs> but I was still holding on to my faith, holding on to my faith. And I'm reading all this stuff John went through. I'm like, girl, is you crazy? You ain't lost no child. You ain't lost no meal. Yeah, your husband lost a job, but he got hired to another job. Three days later, and then they call him back and say, oh, Mr. Bell, we're trying to figure you out a salary because the salary that they had, he was too qualified to even receive that salary. So I just want to just tell y'all, if y'all trust God and stand on his word, God is so faithful. And I know that the devil didn't do none of that stuff because he just could. God allowed it. God wasn't doing it, but he was allowing it because he knew that Peter, I mean, he knew that Job faith was where it needed to be to sustain him. Anything that came forth, because Peter, remember, God had to pray for Peter that his faith failed him not. But he didn't have to pray for Job. He considered Job because he knew Job could stand all the trials and everything that was going to come his way. And I just want to be so much like Job today. I don't want nothing Nothing that's coming that's ever wavered my faith because I know I am mighty strong with God. And can't nothing knock me, can't nothing destroy me, can't nothing devour me because I have a purpose and a plan that God has destined in my life. And I know that Jeremiah 29, 11, he knows the thoughts and the plans he had before a drinker and he going to finish them. Because if he wasn't, he wouldn't have never started it. And I am so encouraged today, and I am so not where I was January the 1st, 2014, on January the 26th, 2014. And that was the last that he would ever see me in doubt my faith, because if I have never had nothing else in this life, drinkers have had faith. I have been through so much in this little 35 years that people look at me and be like, how you smiling? How you doing that? Because I had so much faith in God that I knew, because it's all I was taught, that girl, you trust God, he going to do it. You do this, he going to do it. And he have never, never forsaken me in that. And I am so proud to be his daughter on this day, and I am so encouraged. I didn't even want to speak. I was just so, I don't know what was going on, but I remember the things Bishop had been preaching and teaching, and he was even in praise and worship, and he was like, the devil trying stuff he ain't never tried because he know you on the brink of something. He know his time is about up with you. And the devil was coming at me with stuff I knew wasn't me. I'm like, what is going on? I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. But I was trying to just sustain and not just be all in church and tearing the church up. But that's just how I was feeling. And I'm learning to let go and let God because it's deliverance in my praise. And if I don't Praise him that I'm, I'm defeated anyways. I'm going to leave just how I came. And I was just, now I'm just not even going to go there. Never again, Lord. And I want to pray that you ask that you forgive me for that. And I'm going ahead of myself. But I don't, I'm not going to read all this. But in the end of Job 2, um, and then we went to the, the two-week revival. Oh, my God. And Bishop was just speaking. And I'm like, okay, God, I'm bringing a year in so like this, but I need to know the purpose and what it is for this 2014, because I know 13 was the rebellion, Lord. What did I do with 13? <laughs> what did I do with the 13, Lord? But then when I get done, they was preaching that 14 is deliverance and the year of double portion, and I declare and decree all of that stuff, Lord. <laughs> I'm in, in my year of deliverance, I will be delivered. The old drinker was left in the rebellion. I'm over here in the new deliverance and the double portion. And I was reading down in the Job 42 and all that stuff that had done happen to Job. God gave all that stuff back to him, double for his trouble. And I already knew all that because 10 years ago on this very day, I got two for the whole one. Double for my trouble because I went through a lot of trouble to get those babies. And I was just thanking God and I was so grateful for all that. He was just reminding me of all the things he'd done. And my husband was like, oh, baby, that's good. I want some of that. And I was like, you want to help me preach? He was like, no. Then my mama called. She like, I heard you speaking. And 
they both were saying the same stuff, and I knew it was God because I didn't even think this is what he wanted me to say. And even my sister, she don't know it, and she was like, girl, if God puts something in your spirit, that's what you're supposed to speak on. And this had already been in my spirit. I had already been reading it. And I thank God for just being a willing vessel to listen and not be in the rebellion. And I want to declare and decree on this day that my marriage is a success, my children is a success, my ministry will come forth, prosperity is already on us, everything the devil said will not succeed, we are the head, we are not the tail, we are above, and but not beneath, we are the lenders and not the borrowers. And I pray that y'all will continuously to pray for the devil, and we love y'all. Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to give honor to Christ, who's the head of my life. I want to give honor to my spiritual parents, and I continue to say the best spiritual parents I could ever have to Bishop Robert L. Banks, Jr. and his lovely wife, First Lady Karen Banks. And I want to give honor to all of the deacons and their wives and the ministers and their wives. And, of course, to my husband, thank you just for always being there and for encouraging me. Thank you. And I want to give um, honor to my father-in-law and his lovely wife and their granddaughter for being here and to everyone in their respected places. Dreek. <laughs> I'm nervous too, Dreek. But I know that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I'm going to speak. Bishop has been preaching about faith. Trust God no matter what. And Dreek just came and spoke about one of the most faithful persons in the Bible, which was Job. And I'm going to speak about doubt. Because doubt tends to creep in into your lives, and I know it has because it was it's, it's for the past couple months it's been creeping in my life. And doubt is the opposite of faith. If we can't, without faith, we can't please God. So if we don't have faith, we're not going to be able to please God. And, and doubt, doubt means to feel uncertain about someone or something and not to have confidence in that something or someone. And that's what I, that's what I was experiencing in the past couple months, doubt. I, I was letting it come in. And I'm going to read from Luke chapter 1, starting from verse 8. And the reason why I chose this story is because I was reading this. I read this story, and me and my husband went back and forth in December because I like to read this Luke when Christmas is approaching. And then it came back in my spirit when I heard Bishop on Tuesday. He touched on it just a little. And I was like, okay, Anna, we'll go back to it. And, and I did. I went back to it, and I was like, okay, I'm going to read this story again. And when I read it, I was glad I read it again because I got more insight on it than when I first initially read it. So I'll start from verse 8. And this is the story. Let me, let me tell you. This is the story of Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. And they were very old, and they didn't have any children. Zechariah was barren. Um, Zachar Elizabeth was barren. She, she didn't have any kids. So this is Zechariah at an old age, and this is when the angel appears to him. And it says, Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest before God. He was chosen by lot, according to the customs of priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. And the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, 
and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from birth. Many people of Israel will bring back the Lord, their God. And he will go forth before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready for people to prepare for the Lord. This is Zechariah. Zechariah asked the angels, how can I be sure of this? That's doubt. I am an old man. My wife is well along in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And you will be silent and not able to speak until this day, until this happens, because you did not believe in my words, which will come true at their proper time. Meanwhile, when the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple, and, and when he came out to speak to, to them, they realized he had seen a vision in the temple, and he kept him from making signs to them, and they, they realized he was unable to speak. I'm going to stop there. And two things that I want to focus on that I, that I, and I know it was God, God revealed to me was in this particular story is prayer and doubt. And prayer, when I read this the first time in December, I didn't see it like that. But when I went and read it again after Tuesday, it just, it just was there plain. It was plain. Like this man... Zachariah was inside the temple and he was there lighting incense and everyone else was outside praying as he was burning the incense. And that's where the angel appeared to him alone. And it said, Zachariah, the angel's like, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife will bear you a son. This man was not inside a temple at an old age praying for a son. This man, had, and, and this man had been praying for a son at an earlier stage of his life when he was young. The Bible tells us he was very old, and I'm quite sure his wife was praying for a son as well at a younger age, not at the old age that they were in. And this made me realize, like, oh, my God, this man wasn't in there praying for no son, but yet you came down, the angel came down and said, your prayer has been heard. As Christians, we often Pray, 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 and because we don't get an instant result, an instant answer, we begin to doubt God. And that's what happened here in Zechariah. You know, we, we, we don't pray, and, and we pray, and we're like, okay, why God couldn't do it here? Why God didn't do it this way? Why God couldn't do it here? What's up? What's going on? And this is what's going on with Zechariah. When, when the angel appeared to him, I'm going to paraphrase this, this story to you guys. This, I'm just going to paraphrase it how I think it went down. Zachariah's like, looking at the angel, he's like, your wife's going to bear you a son. And he's like, what you mean? What you mean? Bear me a son. My wife's going to bear. I'm, I'm an old man. I'm old. I'm old and dusty. I can't do to do. <laughs> and my wife, she old too. She's an old rag. Where's mama at? Mama's not here. Mama, mama gave me a new word, y'all. She's a, she ain't a, what, what's the word she said? She said, a spring chicken. <laughs> I never heard that word a day in my life. I was like, what? Mama, what is that? I had to tell my husband, like, what is that? What is a spring chicken? She was no spring chicken. She wasn't young any longer. You know, they, they couldn't produce. They were looking at their situation where they were at right there. Zachariah was looking at that, like, his situation, like, I'm old. I can't do this. He started thinking with his own logical mindset of the situation that he was going through right now presently. Maybe back then when he was praying for a son, he would have been like, okay, yes, I'm ready. Yes, I want my son. But right here, he was old. So he's looking at the angel like, what you mean I'm going to have a son? What you mean? And the angel just is agitated and upset. And this is where, because he doubted, this is where the angel's like, yo, do you know who I am? I'm Gabriel. I'm the angel that stands in the presence of the Lord. The Lord himself sent me to tell you this news. The Lord himself. And because you do not believe, I will silence you. You will not be able to speak. You will not be able to utter a word. Not una palabra, no hablo inglés. He will not be able to speak. 
not nothing. And that's what happened because he doubted God, because he doubted God. And that's where I, I, this is where God revealed to me, like, oh, my God, Lord, when we doubt God's word, God will postpone things in our lives for a season. And this is what I got out of this, out of reading this. I was like, God, this is all you because I'm not even smart enough to realize this. This is God. God is, postpone means to, it means to delay into a future time. And that's what happened with Zachariah's voice. Zachariah's voice, the angel said, because you did not believe the words of God, you will not be able to speak. That means he postponed his voice for a season. The season here was until the, till John the Baptist was born. That's, and until you name your son John, that's when you'll be able to speak. No one else but John was able to call this man John. Even his wife, it tells you here in the story, his wife said, oh, my son's name is going to be John. And everybody looked, and they were muzzled, and they were, you know, they're like, no one in your family is named John. Why are you to give him this name? But, but, but Zechariah had to write down, because he wasn't able to speak. He had to write down his son's name was going to be John. And at that instant, that's when God gave him back his voice, his blessing. That's when he was able to speak again and give God the praise and the glory. And the reason why I chose this is because just like Dreek, Dreek was talking about her faith and, and trusting God, I was also feeling doubt coming in. And doubt is, is a matter of the mind. It's a, it's a mindset. We think about it. If God says I'm the head and I'm not the tail, why do I feel like I'm the tail? If God says I'm the lender and not the borrower, why do I feel like I'm the borrower? I was feeling doubtful. And my husband, oh, God, I love him. He's such an encourager. He tells me things and encourages me from the word. He sent me a text the second week of revival, the first fruit revival. And his text, I woke up and I seen the time of the text. It was four something in the morning. I was like, what is he doing? texting me at four something in the morning that's when he wakes up he wakes up and he he gives himself to the lord and i know it was god i know it was god he sent me a text i'm gonna read y'all what he texts me he he gets all deep y'all he said my text read god said but it was but it did lift my spirit it said god said i got you don't stress about it he will make a way and we will have more than enough it's already done. That lifted my spirit, and he doesn't know how much it lifted my spirit. It lifted my spirit because I was feeling weak. I was feeling weary. I was feeling like, God, it's just not, it's not going on. Are you listening to my prayers? Are you listening to what I'm, what I'm asking? And it's because I didn't get instant answers. I didn't get instant results. I wasn't, you know, I, I was feeling down. I was really feeling down, and I just, that text just made me realize that was from God when he said, I got you. He was saying, trust me. Trust me in your marriage, I got you. Trust me with your children, I got you. Trust me in your finances, I got you. Trust me in your ministry, I got you. And I just came, I just want to encourage people who are feeling down, who are feeling weary and well-doing, trust God. He's got you. God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall change his mind. If he said it, it will be done. If he promised it, it will be fulfilled. And I just came here to encourage anyone who's feeling doubtful to trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Anna. Thank you, Sister Bab and Sister Banks. Let's give them another hand. Amen. One spoke of faith, believing God. One spoke of doubt, which is from the devil. Amen. Now, take an inventory of yourself. Which one are you? We're going to trust God. Amen. Amen. Because we know that's the only way, our only way out to trust the Lord. Amen. We give God thanks and praise for the word. Let's clap our hands again. Amen. Amen. Let us all stand. Amen. While the, the, the ministry and women come around the altar and also the deacons, you, you all know your place. 
Amen. Right here may be someone, as they spoke of earlier, amen, that's going through things. Amen. And we're, that's what we're here for, to help you in your faith. Because Satan, as I said earlier, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But God said, I come to give you life, and that life which is more abundant. And if anyone out there need prayer, or some, someone need to be saved, now's the time. Amen? Amen. We, which are body of baptized believers, we're going to help you through. Amen. Whatever you need from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Whatever the Lord has laid on your heart for prayer, just come. Amen. And believe God. Amen. Let us all pray out there. Amen. Let's keep our mind on the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
will bless. I will bless your name. I will, I will bless your name. Yes, child, I will bless your name. I will, I will bless your name. I will bless, I will bless your name. I will bless your name. You can remain on your feet right there. You go home and thank God for everyone that come out today. We really do God give God praises for you. And again, clap your hand for God's word. Amen. Sister Bow, Sister Banks, thank God for the word of God. Amen. Amen. Just like to say, listen at this. And many times people do not understand what uh, what our church services are all about. Um, I think it's my job as a pastor to teach people, to teach uh, uh, young men, men, young people in ministry how to minister or to help them mature in ministry. And so when you come to the house of God, these young people, these young ladies, they, they are loving the Lord. They are born again. They're saved people. Amen? And um, God has placed them in a position where they are married to ministers. And we believe that um, they're very faithful and love God. And we believe that each and every one of us in this place should have a ministry. And you should have an opportunity to express yourself in ministry. But I believe that this is a place where we come together and be trained, trained in ministry. So I want to thank God for them. What, that was a good word, wasn't it? And in, in the midst of that, one talked about faith and one talked about doubt. Let me say this to you. Anytime where there is faith, doubt is going to be present. You overcome faith. You overcome doubt by believing God. No matter what. And so you're not in a strange place when, when doubt start coming in your mind and all, all you all you need is a word from God. And that's what Emma said that uh, Minister Bubba sent her word. All she needed was a word. And that's why it's so important that we as the people of God stay in the house of God. Uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. The just shall live by yeah, how, you, you live more than one day, don't you? You live when? Every day, don't you? You live every day. So if you live every day, that means you need a word. Amen. You need a word every day. Amen? So as a believer, if you're gonna, if, as a believer, you're born again, you're saved. As a believer, amen, you get your life from believing God's word. Amen? So when we come into the house of God, then this is what it's for. You know, some people just come to, to the house of God, and they come to the house of God out of duty. And I mean, I got duty, but, but I come to the house of God out of purpose. I need to know, I need to know how to represent God as best as I can in this earth. So when we come to the house of God like this, what we're doing, we're being taught from the scripture. We're being taught how to represent God in a better way. Amen? I hope everybody's saved. Everybody saved? Let me see your hand if you say. You say you're going. If the right state play right now, you're going to heaven. I hope with nobody. I ain't, I ain't. Hold that hand up again. Let me see. Don't think I ain't looking. I'm sure looking. I want to know if you. <laughs> well, I said that to say this because because everybody can go to heaven. Jesus died for the whole world. Then they shout Amen. And those of us that 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 raised our hand. The only way we can raise our hand is because we accept what Jesus did on the cross. If you accept what Jesus did on the cross, then the Bible says that you are eternally saved. John 3.16, in case you don't believe me. John 3.16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Watch this. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have what kind of life? Everlasting life. 317 says God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, 
but the world through him might be saved. And that's why you and I can declare we are saved. Simply because of our faith in what Jesus did on the cross. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Saved people, amen? amen? Amen. God bless you. So if you are not saved, please, you do not have to leave out this building without being saved. Amen? Man, it's, it is so much treasure in salvation. It is so much treasure. It's not just a, a mental belief, well, I believe that Jesus died for my sin, and that's it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It's, it's far more than that. As you seek after God in your, in, your, uh, in your new birth experience, as you seek after God, then God will reveal himself more and more to you. Amen. I don't know if everybody feel like me, but I'm glad I'm saved. <laughs> and I'm glad, and I'm glad, I'm glad I got saved when I was young. Hey, I don't care when you Amen. get it, but get it. Amen. He saved me rest just in time. If God hadn't saved me when he saved me, oh my God. Oh my gosh. I don't know where I would have been or what I've been doing. But I, I believe that he saved me right in time. And if you get saved today, I've got news for you. He's, he, he's going to save you just in time. Amen? Amen? So you don't have to leave out of here not being saved. Thank God for you. I pray the favor and the grace of the Lord. Clap your hand for my wife, please. Just thank you. Bless you. And, and, and all the speakers, Drake, Anna, God bless you. And all the special ministries, thank y'all. God bless you. Everybody in the respective place. Thank God for you. We love it on you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for you. May the favor of God rest upon you. Back to him, Sister Max. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands for our musicians. Amen. 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 <laughs> you do it. Thank God for you. Thank God for everybody. Uh, Y'all want to know what we're talking about? Yeah. That's your business. <laughs> I see my nephew and niece in there. God bless you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Amen. 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 They home a little bit too early, but we all right with it. We all right. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, we'll be back. Amen. 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 Wait. Uh, um, is that it? Rehearsal. We, we know we got praise and worship rehearsal. It won't be long with us, y'all. The praise and worship boys. We just got to, we got to get some things straightened out for the women conference. All right, that's the praise team. And that, then we'll be out of here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Amen. Let us raise our hands. Amen. Bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus, we so gracious and thank you, God. We do not take it light, God. Thank you for gathering us together today to hear a word of faith that we can conquer doubt. We thank you for everything that's been done and said today. We thank you for those that you've brought toward the house of God. God, you gave us safety. And Father, as we go to our various places, give us safety again. God, you be with us, cover us. Father, from danger seen and unseen. We thank you for everything. We thank you for everybody. Praise God. We give you the glory, God. We do not count it light. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the shepherd of this house. For laying upon his heart, God, to give us such a time as this. Bless you, Jesus. God, we, we ask that you help us, Father, Bless you. to trust you no matter what. Yes. No matter what we go through, no matter what it look like, knowing in the end we're going to win mm -hmm. if we persevere. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we give you the glory. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Let us all raise our hands while the word of the Lord declares the body of Christ. Yes. Now to him. Oh.